on to the next big topic, which is bipolar devices. And none other than Dr. Dean Mikami is going to talk about that. I urge you to go to the poster session. He has two very interesting uh, posters, and he runs a lab that uh, does some fundamental uh, research on uh, electrical devices and bipolar devices. Dr. Mikami, thank you very much. All right. Well, um, I just want to thank um, Pascal, Leanne, um, Dr. Jones, and Dr. Schweitz Schweitzberger for uh, bringing this kind of uh, issue uh, to the forefront. So at Ohio State University, for the last six years, um, I ran this course, and it, it, our course is called FUSE. My course is called BEST, Basic Electrical Surgical Training for a Resident. So I told the residents, you're, you're going to go to the BEST course and learn about uh, surgical safety. And the funny thing about that course was, you know, we get uh, 26 interns, uh, we give a lecture, then we go to the lab, and the interns are they're so gung-ho, they, they use... Um, the monopolar instruments and the advanced uh, bipolar instruments. And then what I found was uh, attending surgeons would sit in the course. And actually my chairman, uh, Chris Ellison, who is uh, past president of the American Board of Surgery, said, I never got training in uh, basic surgical uh, energy. And actually Scott Melvin, the uh, SAGE's uh, president-elect, you know, he comes in every so often. He goes, is, is that right? I said, yeah, this is right. This is how we're supposed to use surgical energy. So. Uh, this is a very uh, fascinating uh, topic to me, and uh, we do have uh, two posters out there on our, our uh, surgical training for this. So my topic today is uh, uh, bipolar radio frequency electrosurgery. Here are my disclosures. And basically, we talked about this earlier. So, you know, you get electricity out of the wall, and it comes out at 60 hertz. So why aren't we, you know, getting muscle contraction, cardiac arrest? Uh, is because we use an electrical surgical unit. So the uh, ferratic effect is when muscle contractions occur or cardiac interferences occur with 60 hertz of electricity out of the wall. So many companies have uh, understood this phenomenon and created electrical surgical units and we all have these uh, in our OR. So we changed that uh, ferratic effect and we changed the frequency of uh, our energy to 350 kilohertz to 4 megahertz. So we don't have that muscle contraction. So once again, electrical surgical uh, frequencies kind of range between 350 kilohertz to 4 megahertz, uh, and this is the range that we, we operate in today. So we talked about uh, the difference between monopolar instrumentation and bipolar instrumentation, where in monopolar uh, instrumentation, the patient uh, is, is what's standing between the two electrodes. For bipolar instrumentation, uh, the active electro oh, sorry, the, the active uh, tissue is what is between the jaws of the tissue. So the patient's really kind of brought out of the uh, equation there. So we have uh, two active electrodes and energy passing through those two active electrodes. So what are the benefits of bipolar instrumentation versus monopolar instrumentation? Uh, it doesn't require a dispersive electrode. So when you're setting up a bipolar case, you don't have to put the uh, dispersive electrode on the field. Uh, capacitance is not an issue. The magnetic fields cancel out. Uh, energy primarily stays between the jaws. So uh, uh, cases where you have patients with pacemakers and other uh, implantable devices, we'll have a talk about that later on, you really don't have to worry about that. Requires less voltage and current because we're using the uh, cut waveform. So we also talked about this effect earlier on. When we have um, a flow of electricity through tissue, we get a, a heat buildup. With that heat buildup, we get resistance and desiccation of the tissue. So the electrons move around that area of high impedance. So you have this mushroom effect. So you know, clinically, what is the mushroom effect? That's really thermal spread. And at the end of this talk, I'm going to show you a video that's going to change the way you think of electrical surgical energy in the OR. You know, what you cannot see definitely can hurt your patients, and we're going to try to demonstrate that uh, principle. The good thing about it is uh, with advanced uh, bipolar instruments, can be used underwater, or more importantly, can be used uh, under blood. Right? So one of the things that uh, is needed with um, bipolar instrumentation is coaptation. So coaptation means that we have to compress the tissue um, to have protein coagulation. So compression is necessary. So 
in older uh, bipolar instrumentation, sometimes we had over compression and the tips of the uh, instrument actually uh, touched up here and you had uh, a bypass of the energy uh, around the tissue. The limitations of traditional bipolar uh, instrumentation include uh, continuous uninterrupted uh, delivery of energy. Surgeons uh, control delivery of energy by actually just looking at the tissue, looking at the changes that we see in the tissue, and then uh, releasing the instrument. There is really no feedback mechanism to determine impedance, so we had increased uh, thermal spread, uh, carbonization of tissue, and promotes excess thermal damage. The devices could not coapt or uh, compress tissue um, well, and uh, coagulation was often incomplete. And as we saw from some of the slides earlier on, that you really need two clean blades to seal that vessel. So the big changes that have occurred over the last probably 25 years are modern bipolar advanced technology. Um, we have feedback mechanisms. So it's, it's incredible what these uh, machines can do today. We have better consistent hemostasis. We have less thermal spread, less plume uh, formation, less tissue uh, carbonization and sticking. You know, what's the worst thing? You, you grab a vessel, you seal it, and you open it up, and it's stuck on one of your instruments, and you got to peel it off, and it bleeds again. Uh, larger vessels can be sealed today, up to uh, seven uh, millimeters in size. The smart generation or generator technology it's, it has near real-time impedance feedback from the uh, device that you're using. So in the past, when the surgeon would uh, co-opt co the uh, tissue, apply the energy, the surgeon would look back and forth and see if the tissue was sealed. So now, these generators um, can talk and feedback uh, with itself 3,000 to 30,000 times a second and really give us a, a, a good seal. It has pulsing rapid on and off energy systems that allows for interval uh, cooling of the tissue. And most importantly, it now tells us your tissue is sealed, you can release the instrument by these uh, audible signals. Uh, and I think the main uh, point of all this technology is the total energy required is much less than the traditional bipolar instrumentations that we have used in the past. Um, the mechanisms uh, that these bipolar instruments have auto-regulation of uh, the outputs at the jaw, the high jaw compression allowing for less energy um, that's gonna be um, sent to the tissue. Some of the devices that are in the market, and I bring this up just uh, to talk about this study here, um, a study by Dr. Newcomb and his um, colleagues, comparison of different uh, sealing uh, instrumentation, and basically looking at uh, different size vessels, two to three millimeters, four to five, and six to seven. And as you can see, the mean burst pressure in the study uh, are, are really high, up to 1,000 uh, millimeters of mercury of pressure. And if you look at the physiological um, systolic blood pressure we get, you know, up to maybe 200 to 250, uh, most of these instrumentations work fine, especially in the smaller vessels, less than five uh, millimeters in size. When we get to the six to seven, uh, there can be some um, differences. Also, the mean seal time, these instruments are, are, are very advanced. They can seal vessels. You know, how fast can you put a clamp and tie a vessel? Probably 10, 15 seconds or so. These uh, instrumentations, uh, advanced bipolar instruments, can seal vessels now in, you know, looks like one to five to six uh, seconds, which, is, which will save time in the uh, operating room. So a lot of, uh, there are functional uh, differences in uh, the, the devices that are out there. Um, some devices seal and divide the tissue simultaneously. Some seal and have a separate division uh, mechanism and some seal with a, or some divide with a blade and some divide with um, bipolar uh, energy. I think one of the key things that we want to uh, emphasize are the best practices to use these advanced bipolar instrument, instruments. You know, the key thing is you want to uh, keep tension off the tissue. So if you're picking up a vessel, you don't want to really be uh, uh, pulling on that vessel. You want no tension when the uh, device is activated. Uh, probably most important thing of all is you want to keep those jaws clean. And, you know, how many times have we been in cases where we're using our advanced bipolar instrument and there's uh, carbonization built up on the uh, device and you don't want to pull it out because you've got a good rhythm going. But as you, as you saw in our, some of our earlier videos, 
you need the, those two active electrode jaws to be very clean to co-opt the tissue and to create the seal that, that you need. Um, some warnings about things that can complicate or uh, make these devices uh, malfunction, uh, um, patients with cirrhosis, chronic steroid use, atherosclerosis, um, calcified vessels, uh, malnutrition, and other collagen uh, vascular disease. So here's the uh, one thing I, I want to leave you with, and I think uh, what we uh, did last year in our FUSE course is we were trying to get these uh, thermal imaging cameras, and if you've ever seen one, um, they're often used in home inspection where you get a thermal camera and you can see where your heat leaks are in the house and where, where heat is escaping. So we had the um, privilege of having a $15,000 thermal camera at, my, at Ohio State for one day, and we set up a lab. Uh, on the spot there. So we know that tissue death happens at 60 degrees Celsius. And on this um, kind of image here, it's hard to see, but that's about uh, 250 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So 60 degrees Celsius is somewhere in the middle here. So what we want to show is when you're operating and you're using your advanced bipolar instrument, you're taking short gastrics down and you're grabbing the stomach and flipping it over with your advanced bipolar instrument, and you're like, oh, you know, what's the big deal about all this, um, you know, uh, safe use of surgical energy? It, had, it makes no difference at all. So here's a, a little setup. This is a piece of uh, ham here, but we're, we're using a thermal imaging camera, and you, as you can see that um, the grid on that screen is about five centimeters apart, and that white kind of um, thermal image uh, track that you see is over 60 degrees Celsius. So we're getting cell tissue death probably about uh, one to four millimeters away from our jaws. So everything in that area is, all those cells are dying. So if you're taking down um, the stomach and the stomach has a, a, a sink because it's cool and it has a lot of blood vessels going through it, you are actually killing cells probably one to four millimeters away from that area. Um, if you're taking down the colon and you're uh, uh, a centimeter or less off the colon, you're like, there's no harm in this, but if you could put a thermal camera in the uh, abdomen and film this, you would understand why we're so um, passionate about um, training our, our, our surgeons on how to use energy safely. So in uh, conclusion, uh, bipolar radiofrequency electrosurgery is a safe form of surgical energy if used correctly. Modern bipolar technology advances have lowered the total energy required to achieve the desired effects, and we can lower the possibility of inadvertent thermal injuries by understanding thermal spread and by um, understanding residual heat effects with our instruments. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. That was great, uh, Dean. Thank you very much.